RuneLite has been game changing for old school RuneScape. It can now not only make the game look better, it can make you a better PKer, allow you to complete difficult content, protect you in the wilderness and has a thousand quality of life fixes for some of the most annoying content. So here are the top 35 that you should be using, ranked in order of how good they are. First though, as always, there's a bond hidden within the video and the first person to find it and timestamp it with their username gets it. At number 35 is Implings. This will allow you to see Implings as you travel around Gilanor much more easily, and you can even select which ones it does this for. Every Impling that you want to find, it will now have the name written above it in the game and on the minimap as well, and it can even send you notifications if you want. It's very simple but effective and will mean that you catch far more of them doing whatever it is that you normally do whilst playing the game. Next up is Boss Timers. That gives you a countdown to when a boss is about to respawn, allowing you to get prey up at the ideal time. Grand Exchange can send you a bunch of notifications to track your current GE offers, but the most useful thing that I think this one does is to show you the going price of an item. This is the price that the item has recently been selling for, as the GE price only updates every 4 hours. It can save you so much time waiting for an offer to come in, or from massively overpaying for an item. When you go into a combat area, the cannon plugin will tell you where the best place to put your cannon is, how many cannonballs are loaded into it, and how long left until it decays. A very simple but effective quality of life add-on. 31 is Guardians of the Rift. This minigame has changed how most of us train runecrafting, but sometimes it's difficult to see what things are active, especially the Guardians, and all this does is highlight them so they're much easier to see. It also has a bunch of other features such as a delay so that you don't walk in and out at the start. Let's be honest, we've all done it. Custom menu swaps allow you to prioritise which creatures that you attack when there's more than one of them on the same tile. The obvious ones that you may use these on are when you're killing Bandos or Ziliana at God Wars Dungeon. By using this formula and then just replacing the names on whatever you're doing, it will always prioritise the one that you put here. So as you run around, you no longer need to right click to select which one to attack and it will always be left click on the one that you want. The camera plugin on its own isn't too amazing, but now with other plugins added in the game that allow you to render much further distances and alter the graphics, you can now zoom out to get the full effect resulting in some amazing graphics and also the ability to move much further with every click. You can also zoom in further than normal too, ideal for things like one ticking bones at the altar. The tile pack plugin does all of the work for you and will automatically put tile markers at all of the bosses where there are safe spots. Or anywhere else for that matter where the strategies that require standing on certain tiles in order to avoid all damage from bosses. Plus bosses like the alchemical hydra that has predictable movements. So you'll either think the next one is amazing or completely pointless, but if you play multiple accounts or work from home, there's no better way to train during that zoom call than to AFK with idle notifications on that will tell you when the tree is cut, whirlpool moves, or you need to reset your aggro at that AFK slayer task. Inventory tags is a perfect example that the simplest plugins sometimes are the best. This allows you to recall any item that you have. It's used by many players to recall a melee, mage and range gear to three different colours. That way, when you're in PvP or bossing, you can quickly see where your gear is or spot if you have made a mistake with your switches. There's nothing more annoying than forgetting an item in the gauntlet, and this plugin not only keeps track of them for you, but you can set exactly how many you need of each resource for your personal setup. You can also recolor resources or NPCs so that they are easier to see, and a bunch of other things that make it a lot easier. Radius markers are a bit of an eyesore, but they allow you to easily find safe spot for creatures as it tells you the spawn point, wonder range and attack range, but it's probably best used against Aka in the tombs of a musket. When he swaps styles, radius markers changes the colour tile around him so you can quickly see what to pray against. If you do clue scrolls, you'll probably love Puzzle Solver, which tells you the next three steps of any puzzle box. A complicated plugin it definitely isn't, but it's believed to add three years to your life expectancy. Tubes of a Masket is similar to the Gauntlet one and will help you in various ways throughout the raid. You can share invocation setups, it shows you the chance of a pet or a unique, as well as a lot of other things, but its main use is probably in the path before each boss, especially on this path which essentially shows you the answer for every single puzzle. Inventory setups allows you to quickly access and save specific gear layouts really quickly. There's another one similar to this that in other ways is better, but this is much less time consuming. Put on any gear you want to keep as a setup, open the tab Inventory Setup and click plus, then add a new setup. 
give it whatever name you want and now anytime you're in the bank if you click on the eye over here the bank will only show you the gear that was in that setup which is also include your inventory if you wanted to. The next one comes with a choice. If you're in the wilderness and you are not a PK, it will probably save your life, but at the cost of a really annoying flashing screen. You can set this up to make your screen flash anytime another player is within a certain distance of you. At the max setting of 30 tiles, it notifies you of other players way before you can even see them. That on its own is very powerful, but combined with World Hopper, as long as you're not in combat, it pretty much makes you unkillable in the wilderness. World Hopper allows you to hop to the next world or to the previous one using just one key and you can pick whichever one you want. As soon as your wilderness alarm goes off, by pressing that one key will mean you instantly hop worlds way before anyone can possibly attack you. You can even use it if you're safe spot on things like lava dragons as you can instantly hop worlds as long as they don't hit you. But if you do get attacked it does stop you from logging out for a few seconds. This plugin is also ideal for Iron Men buying from shops and hopping worlds very quickly. Player indicators have many uses. They give any group of players the same colour tag or name, which is ideal for multi-combat PvP and wilderness bossing, so you can see exactly who is who. It also highlights friends and clanmates in busy places, such as the GE. Sometimes we forget what it was like learning a boss, but most of us will remember that Zora was a complete pain in the... With so many things happening, this plugin tells you exactly where to stand at any time during a battle. It will still take a while to learn the other mechanics, but it's believed to have saved 3,274 monitors from being smashed over the years, and at least 7 of those were not from skill specs. Next is another raid plugin, and the one that does the least, but I think is probably the most useful. Whilst the other raid plugins help you learn or make certain things a little bit easier, this one just gives you the raid layout. That alone though saves players so much time by picking the fastest raids such as ones with overload drops and raids with 5 rooms instead of 6. This add-on has consistently saved players of all levels countless hours of raiding. Some might be surprised to see this as high as number 15, but try 1 hour of finding books in the core and library without it. After finding one book, it shows you the probable location of other books in the library and after finding two books you know the entire location of every single one. Without it, you would have to click on every section of the library just to get one inventory of 16 books. There's no way at all that anyone thinks that that is fun content. So next time you're thinking about putting a cannon in World 302, don't do it or a Jmod somewhere out there will create content like the Archaeus library. Logout Timer is my new best friend. It allows you to be inactive without logging out for 25 minutes instead of the usual 5. It's ideal for splashing, nightmare zone and training on multiple accounts. Even Slayer, if you load up with enough prayer items, you can last much longer than the 10 minutes needed before you have to reset aggro, making any aggressive Slayer task AFK. When this plugin is combined with idle notification that makes a sound when you are idle, it takes AFK training to a whole new level. You can also use the plugin item drop sound notification, which didn't make the list, which will notify you for any specific drop that you choose. So on your AFK Slayer task, you don't miss that whip, dog bow, brimstone key, or even totem piece drop. Rune Watch is the unsung hero of Runelight. Any player that has reportedly scammed another player, such as not splitting in a raid or paying up for a deathmatch, gets placed on a banned list, making it far harder to get into teams or deathmatches in the future. And the best part is it tracks the names of players, even if they double or triple name change. It runs in the background and most of us don't give it any thought whatsoever, but it's single-handedly saving a lot of players from being scammed out of a lot of GP. The only downside to this plugin is it can be open to abuse. I've been in a raid myself where two players that hated each other agreed to never split between them. Sure enough, one of them got a drop and the other threatened to report them for not splitting. They've got a team that tried to minimise that, but I don't envy them because it must be really difficult to do when things like this are happening. Bank tags are similar to inventory tags, but whilst it takes longer to set up, after you've done it, you can have any layout saved exactly as you would equip it or have it in your inventory. This means that you can quickly take out any setup from your bank in the order you want it extremely quickly. Plus, the extra bank tags are also useful for other content because in them you can duplicate where items are located. In these tabs, you can have items that are in your normal tabs. So, for example, if you have a farming tab with a spade in it, with the new tab, you can also have a clue scroll tab and put the spade in that too. Raiding tabs can have duplicate gear, as well as different PvP setups, without having to search your entire bank just for that odd item. 
Should little anti drag be at number 11? Well, I think so. Missing a click, swapping gear, dragging food instead of eating it at a crucial time are all things that can be very frustrating in the game. Anti drag just means that to drag an item in the game has to be far more deliberate and you're much less likely to do it accidentally. You can change the sensitivity on it to whatever level that you find the best and it affects every part of the game that requires a lot of clicking, even just one tick, prayer training, making bolts or saplings. In 10th we have the loot tracker, allowing us to annoy other players when we get that expensive item on our 5th kill or cry if we don't have it on our 500th kill. We can get drop rates from the wiki and entire loot tables, yet there's something good about just having our own personal loot from any creature that we kill. Entity Hider has always been useful in PvP and allows you to see what the other person is wearing and praying when they step under you. But it can also be useful in other ways too, such as forestry which is completely overcrowded. This plugin can hide players, pets, NPCs and even random events so you can actually see the content you're trying to do. PvP Performance Tracker is such a useful tool for showing you where you're going wrong or right in PvP. It gives you information on how often you hit off prey, breach attack style, how often you get your offensive prayers right, your damage done and also the damage you should have done in case you got really unlucky with the RNG. DPS Calculator is a great way to get the ideal setup for any creatures as you play the game. Plus it can use your existing setups and import it directly into the calculator, saving you a ton of time scrolling through every single item in the usual DPS checkers. You can also import your stats and prayers directly into it, so in just a few seconds you can work out your best gear without leaving the game, and it also shows you your max hit, hit chance, average time per kill and how long your prayer will last. The sixth best plugin in my opinion is the XP Tracker. This tracks the exact XP you get in any skilling method whatsoever. It's not just useful for working out what the best methods for you are, but it's a great visual to have and often motivates you to see if you can get that little bit of extra XP per hour. It also provides you with a ton of information that you don't always get in guides, such as XP for uncommon training methods, herb runs, or how much XP you gain for that birdhouse run compared to what you're actually losing. Whether you do 10 or 1000 clue scrolls every year, not having to constantly look up coordinates on the wiki, riddles or answers is a massive game changer. It will give you the location of any clue scroll when you open your world map, tell you the answer to any single riddle, let you know what items you need to wear, and it highlights the amount that you need to do. It even shows you the exact spot you need to dig, so gone are the days of comparing your screen to a little picture to see if you're in the right place. In fourth, I've put GPU, even though it's effectively being replaced recently. While it's purely for appearance, it's the first step to making the entire game run a lot smoother and look better for a lot of players. The Cameron plugin lets you see a lot further, but without GPU, you'll have dark areas in the distance. By increasing the draw distances, you can just see a much larger area instead. It also allows PKs to spot other players in the wilderness because whilst it doesn't show players that are far away, it does show you the animations of the creatures that they're fighting, like Dragon Breath. It also increases performances in many other ways, such as removing the 50 FPS cap on the camera, which makes it very jerky in certain locations like Fossil Island and the Song of the Elves quest. The third best plugin is somewhat controversial and many will believe that this should be number one whilst others absolutely refuse to even use it. The 117 HD plugin is absolutely amazing. It takes our game which we love but that's very old in its design and makes it look like a much more recently released game and that's also the reason why it's only number 3, because some people just don't want that. However, if you do, it will even scale it to whatever your PC can handle and does everything GPU does and far more. You can change shadows, draw distances, graphics, details, blending and even change the colour of the sky. If you want old school RuneScape as it was, you can use GPU, but if like me, you're not opposed to updating old school RuneScape, you are just opposed to the wheel spinning, pay to win, double XP, on top of bonus XP, thousands of skins, pets on fire, and the evolution of combat that RuneScape 3 became, then this is just old school RuneScape, but it looks a thousand times better. At number 2, there's only one person in the whole of old school RuneScape that doesn't love this one, and that's Slayer Music. Quest Helper will tell you every single thing that you need to do in a quest, gear, stats and pre-quests. It tells you both visually and in the description exactly what to do, where to go and even highlights the items in your inventory that you need to use. Gone are the days of missing some text in a guide, 
only to have to go all the way back to the last place or switching between tabs while reading the next part of a quest. At number one is a plugin responsible for making thousands of things just a tiny bit better. But add them all up and overall for me this is the one I think I would miss the most if I couldn't use Runelite again. Menu Entry Swapper allows you to change the left click option to pretty much everything in the game. You can now make all of your jewellery a one click teleport by shift clicking on it and selecting the new left click option. In fact you can also select a completely different teleport too by using the shift click option as well. It also lets you change the left click option on a banker or the grand exchange clerk to bank or access the GE immediately instead of needing to right click. It gives you the option to shift click by 1, 5, 10 or 50 items to a shop at a time. Changing the left click option on bones will allow you to use them instead of bury them and this makes prayer training twice as fast by one tick off from them at an altar. Almost every single annoying part of the game that normally requires multiple unnecessary clicks can be changed to one click with this instead. With this very simple but extremely useful plugin. Which is why in my personal opinion this gets the top spot as the most useful. It's just my opinion though, what do you think and what plugin did I miss? There's so many out there, there's bound to be at least one that you've been screaming at the screen for to say it should be in here. 